Okay, so this little video is to learn how to run an analysis of variance, a simple ANOVA, uh, using SPSS. Uh, I'm using the data file uh, SPSS for YouTube.save, SPSS for YouTube.save. And we're going to run a simple analysis of variance uh, to determine if there are significant differences in the student performance on the grade 8 language arts uh, assessment based on the years of tutoring that they've had, either no years of tutoring, one year of tutoring, or two years of tutoring. So grade 8 LAL would be our dependent variable, and years of tutoring would be our independent variable or our main effect, and it's at three levels, zero years, one year, or two years. Uh, to run an analysis of variance, I simply select Analyze. I go down and I select Compare Means, and when the extra little menu pops up, I go all the way down and I select one-way ANOVA. My one-way ANOVA dialog box will appear. In the dependent list, I'm going to put place from my list of variables on the left, grade 8 LAL, because I want to see what the differences are between students on the grade 8 LAL, and I want to see that difference based on the years of tutoring that they've had, either no years of tutoring, one year of tutoring, or two years of tutoring. So that's our factor box, or what we would consider our main effect, or our independent variable. The main effect is at three, uh, th three levels, zero years, one year, and two years. I'm then going to select my post hoc test. Now, since I don't know at this point whether the Levine statistic, which tests for equal variances between the groups, is not significant, I'm going to select two post hoc tests. Typically, we would use a Tukey. So if the Levine's test is not statistically significant, we would look at the Tukey post hoc results. If the Levine test is statistically significant, then we would look at the game's Howell results. So I'm going to select both now because I don't know what the case is until I run the analysis. I click Continue. Then I click the Options button. Little dialog box appears. I want to select descriptive statistics and I want to select the homogeneity of variance test. This is the Levine statistic, the homogeneity of variance test. I click continue. I then click OK. I immediately get my one way ANOVA output. First table is our descriptives table. And as we can see here, zero years, 39 students, they had a mean score in the grade 8 LAL of 215. One year of tutoring, 68 students, they had a mean score of 226. Two years of tutoring, 107 students, they had a mean score of 225 on the grade 8 LAL. Three levels. We're going to see if the differences between these groups are statistically significant. First, we look at our hom homogeneity of variance. Remember, for analysis of variance, equal variances have to be assumed across all three groups or all levels. Um, to meet one of the assumptions of an analysis of variance. The Levine statistic is not significant. Since it's not significant, it's telling us that, yes, these three groups, the homo homogeneity of variance is equal across the three groups, so we're good. This means when we do our post hoc, we're going to use the games, uh, I'm sorry, we're going to use the Tukey's test because we were not significant here. We're going to use the Tukey's test. Next thing I look at is the analysis of variance table. The analysis of variance table tells me if these differences between these three groups, zero years, one year, and two years, if these differences are statistically significant. The ANOVA table, the F value, which is the ANOVA statistic is 6.549. Remember, the larger the F gets, the more likelihood that it's significant. And our significance level here is 0 0.002. Since it's less than 0 0.05, it's telling us that the differences between these three group means are statistically significant. Now, a statistic that SPS doesn't calculate for us is something called eta squared, which gives us the relative effect of the analysis of variance, the entire model. In other words, how much grade 8 LAL can actually be explained by the differences in tutoring, in the, the, the differences in tutoring. To get that number, I simply take the sum of squares between, and I divide it by the sum of squares total. So if I were to do that, and I'm doing it right now on my calculator, 3, 8, 7, 3.676 divided by 
0.0569.234 gives me 0 0.0584. I turn that into a percentage and it would be 5.8. So 5.8% of the variance in grade 8 LAL can be explained by tutoring, the levels of tutoring. That's called ETA squared. The next thing I look at is my multiple comparisons table. In an analysis of variance, this is one of the most important things that we can look at when we know we have a significant ANOVA. The next thing is our post hoc tests. Now, since the Levine statistic was not significant, I can look at the Tukey's honestly significant differences, HSD. I can look at this test to look at my differences between groups. So between group zero, no years of tutoring and one year of tutoring, the difference in means is 11 points. Is it statistically significant? I look over here and it, that tells me, yes, it is statistically significant. Then I look at zero years of tutoring to two years of tutoring. What's the difference? 10 points, which is interesting. 10 points, is that statistically significant? Yes, it is statistically significant. The only other comparison I need to really look at is between one years and two years. So between one years tutoring and two years tutoring, the difference in means is less than one point. Is that statistically significant? No, it is not statistically significant. So I have two statistically significant uh, differences out of the three possibilities. Zero to one year, 11 point difference, zero to two years, a 10 point difference, which is rather interesting that it drops a little bit and could possibly suggest that one year of tutoring uh, is probably the most advantageous, although more study might need to be done on this. So in both cases, zero to one and zero to two were statistically significant. It would mean I'd need to compute effect sizes. In order to compute effect size, I would take this mean difference and I would divide it by the square root of the mean squares uh, within, the mean squares within. So the mean squares within is 295.761, and I take that square root, and it's 17.197, 17.197. So I would then go to my mean differences here, that's 11.55, and I'm going to divide that by 17.197. So I have 11.55241 and I'm going to divide it by 17.197 and I'm going to get a, an effect size of 0 0.67, 0 0.67, which as you know is a large effect size. By the way, the signs really don't matter here. It's just um, the addition that was done before taking a greater value from a lesser value. So that's why the negative signs are here. Don't really pay attention to them. They look at the absolute value. So the effect from zero years of tutoring to one year of tutoring, the Cohen's D would be 0 0.67. For zero years of tutoring to two years of tutoring, I take my mean difference of 10.59406 and I divide that by 17.197 and I get an effect size of 0.616 or 0.62 so again a strong effect so in both cases I have an extremely strong effect um, in those significant differences from 0 to 1 I believe it was 0 0.69 from 0 to 2 was 0 0.62 both large effect size so what we found is, is that there are significant differences based on the years of tutoring. No years to one year, no years to two years. There are significant differences in students' grade 8 LAL uh, performance based on the number of years that they have tutoring.